the Wolf Manor started off as just an idea for an Italian immigrant named Antony Andriotti. He wished to build a beautiful and luxurious home for his wife on a plot of land in Clovis, California, and back in 1922 he accomplished this dream. Antony Andriotti, now known as Tony Andrews, named the mansion the Andrews Estate, and this five-bedroom mansion included elegant artwork all along the ceilings and a lavish ballroom. However, Andrews lost his wife's dream home in 1926 because it proved to be out of his financial means. Andrew's sad story ends when he dies at the young age of 36 from cirrhosis of the liver. This was the end of the Andrews estate, but the home would go on to become a legend. Nine years after Andrews had lost his home, the mansion was given new ownership and was converted into the Hazelwood Sanitarium in 1935. The mansion was now used as a place to treat those with terminal illnesses with one of those illnesses being tuberculosis, which was what plagued the area during this time. Even though there was death surrounding the mansion, there have been records of babies being born there as well. The Hazelwood Sanitarium changed ownership and became the Clovis Avenue Sanitarium in 1942. The mansion went under rapid change, and a hospital wing was added to treat those with mental disorders in 1954 after the Department of Mental Hygiene licensed the sanitarium. However, the health standards were not as high as they are today, and there were rumored to be naked patients lying in the hallways or being tied to a toilet or bed. There was so much overcrowding that most patients didn't even have their own rooms. Beds were shoved into any place that could accommodate the space, and there were nurses that were assigned to 20 patients at one given time. For those who died in the sanitarium, their bodies were sent to the basement, which was used as a temporary body storage until someone came to pick them up. Many paranormal researchers believe this created an environment of hauntings in the mansion. During its final 20 or so years of operation, the house was known as the Clovis Nursing Home. Then in 1992, the nursing home would be forced to shut down after losing accreditation. The mansion took a different turn in 1996 when local entrepreneur, Todd Wolf, converted the mansion into a haunted attraction that he named Scream If You Can. At first, Todd Wolf only rented the home for his Halloween attraction that took place every night for two and a half weeks surrounding Halloween. He was later offered to buy the property in 1997, which he agreed to, and the mansion was now named the Andlebury Estate. The Andlebury Estate became famous for its innovative attractions but infamous for the paranormal activity that occurred there. Those that were in the mansion experienced being physically touched by unknown beings and started seeing apparitions. After ending the attraction's run in 2004, Todd Wolf had new plans for the estate. In 2007, he began the Wolf Manor Hotel project. With the new name, the mansion would attract new interest. Wolf opened the place for tours and ghost hunts and researchers that flocked to the estate were able to collect EVP recordings and photographic and video evidence of the paranormal activity. The newly named Wolf Manor became so popular that it was featured on paranormal television shows like Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and The Dead Files. The infamy that surrounded the home was not enough to keep it standing. The City of Clovis Board of Appeals declared the vacant mansion a nuisance and a danger after finding 22 building code violations in the house and surrounding the property. This once beautiful and luxurious home was now in a state of disrepair that Wolf fought hard to keep it from being demolished. The mansion lacked plumbing, was in violation of fire, and in violation of building and electrical codes. The city document stated that the mansion had broken and missing windows and that the fence was falling down. Clovis deemed the house unsafe to occupy in 2011, and billed any fire or police service calls to Wolf because of the hazardous state it was in. The fire department had been called to the property, and the Clovis police had reported a total of 96 calls since 2008. As a result, the Wolf Manor became a location that produced the highest number of public safety responses. Wolf was told that the mansion didn't have to be demolished if he were to be able to correct the violations. But he was unable to gain any financial support to save the mansion. Wolf's final recourse was to file a civil suit against Clovis in the Fresno County Superior Court, however, Clovis city officials became doubtful that the Wolf Manor would ever be repaired. The city of Clovis declared this infamous mansion as an attractive nuisance and placed a deadline onto Wolf to remove anything he wished to keep from the property by November 3, 2014. This incredible and historical mansion that stood for 92 years was demolished on November 8, 2014. Many people lit candles for the spirits in the home along with leaving letters and flowers.
Some hung up posters against the fence shaming the city of Clovis for allowing the demolishment of a historical home. Despite the city officials' attempts at keeping the actual demolishment data secret, many heard through social media when the demolishment was happening and raced to the mansion to see it one last time. It was an emotional day for not only the spectators that supported the Wolf Manor, but for Wolf himself. 100 years after the construction of this historic mansion and eight years since its destruction, the lot in which it sat on remains empty. With, so far, no interest in the property for redevelopment. Some say it will remain empty for many years. Those who believe in its dark history say it is cursed. Others see it as a reminder of a past that doesn't want to disappear into obscurity. The surrounding area is now fully developed with commercial and residential buildings taking up all available spaces. But the desolate Wolf Manor lot remains unwanted.